We're on a voyage of discovery to uncover the secret wildlife of the River Thames, and our epic journey is almost complete. The Thames comes to an end as it joins the North Sea at South End, but before we reach that point, there are still some exciting creatures left to meet. As the estuary opens out, we find some of the larger residents of the Thames. Now, occasionally, some of these animals may become ill or injured, but luckily for them, help is at hand. Bob Archel and Emma Webb work for a charity called the British Divers Marine Life Rescue, or BDMLR. They provide a sort of ambulance service for marine mammals in distress, and each year they rescue hundreds of dolphins, porpoises and seals. And last year, the charity were caught in the media spotlight when they came to the aid of the famous Thames whale. It was January 2006 when the northern bottlenose whale strayed up the river to Battersea and captured the hearts of millions. Away from its natural habitat, the whale was suffering from chronic dehydration and the BDMLR were called in to try and save the stranded mammal. For three days, they battled day and night to return the whale to the sea. But sadly, it was just too poorly and died as the rescue vessel neared Gravesend. Today, I've joined Bob and Emma on a much happier mission. Low tide at South End on Sea exposes huge expanses of sandbank. And when the weather's good, seals come ashore to bask in the sun. This big guy in the, in the foreground is a grey seal, yeah? Yes, yeah, you can uh, tell that from its groan and yeah, nose, yeah. and it's uh, much bigger than the others. And they're presumably quite difficult to approach, you want to be very careful when getting close to a big seal. Absolutely, uh, certainly one of the main things to look out for is their teeth, because a seal bite is extremely painful and they can actually become quite badly infected. Bob and Emma make regular trips out here to keep a close eye on the seals. If they spot any signs of illness or injury, they can provide the necessary help. Although seals have few natural predators, they can be prone to illness caused by pollution. And in a busy tourist area like this, fishing tackle can be a danger too. You see the guy fishing there? Yeah, the orange boat. Yeah, that's a good indication of the hazard that these seals face because a seal could swim right into the hook and line and become injured. Yeah. Equally though, the seals can be a danger to tourists. Yeah, don't get too close. That here is about as close as you really want to get. They yeah. will bite if they're in the water. And... Fortunately, the sand flats at South End give us the perfect place to get a good look at the seals without getting too close. In the UK, there are two species of seal, the common and the grey seal. There are around 150,000 of these mammals living in British waters, and in the Thames, they feed on fish and eels. Fully grown grey seals can be two metres long and weigh almost a quarter of a tonne. One of them is, has got that sort of gingery colour. We hear about the ginger seals in the Thames. What actually causes that? We think it's the iron oxide that's actually in the mud, and when they haul out, it actually eventually turns them that very, very ginger colour. Common seals breed in May and June, and generally the females give birth to just a single pup. These pups are extremely vulnerable, and if lost or abandoned by their mothers, they're unable to fend for themselves. Up to 40% of pups die before they're a year old, and they warrant special attention from Bob and Emma. Now, the pup that we've got over there looks quite skinny. Is that a cause for concern at all? Yeah, but not uh, immediate concern because it's associating with other adult seals. So until we're satisfied that it is genuinely not suckling and not putting on weight, we wouldn't interrupt uh, or interfere with uh, what's going on there. Yeah. If people get close to them, that's a good indication that they're ill. Right, because you can't normally get close to a seal. No. The seal's going to get in the water quickly and, and escape. Now, how many seals do you actually have in this little creek here? Well, it ranges from zero to about 20. That's the maximum I've counted. And they obviously like it here, and they put up with the boat traffic that's going up and down and the disturbances from the tourists and things like that. Yeah. But... The fish run up and down the creek, and uh, there's plenty of fish for them. Uh, and they compete with the uh, yachtsmen uh, for the beach. Yeah. Of course, it's not just seals that come under Bob and Emma's watchful eye. Dolphins, whales and porpoises are all spotted off the South End coast. Earlier in the year, we had a lone bottlenose dolphin, which was actually up at Canby Island. Um, we think that has now moved on. 
but we will be checking the area just to make sure he hasn't come back. Probably this is a location where um, bottlenose dolphins would live mm -hmm. in groups uh, a long time ago. So to see a bottlenose dolphin turn up was great, but it would have been better to see more than one turn up mm. because uh, individual dolphins have peculiar problems. Um, but that one stayed for about 10 months and then moved on, put on a lot of weight, got very strong, and hopefully he's now out there somewhere with um, a pod. With guardian angels Bob and Emma watching over them, the mammals of the Thames estuary are in very safe hands. <laughs>